Hey guys, welcome back to Fix It Friday. So this week we are back with the Nintendo 64 and we're going to be looking at the latest HDMI mod for the Nintendo 64 and this is the Pixel FX Retro Gem. So what's nice about this particular solution is that you get a fully digital to digital HDMI out from your Nintendo 64 and it can go up to 1440p um, and uh, it has all sorts of really nice options for just making your 64 look as good as possible. So I have covered um, this mod before. It's really cool because you can install it in a variety of different consoles. So for now at least, you can install it in the uh, Nintendo 64, the PS1, PS2, and I believe the Sega Dreamcast as well. Um, so yeah, what we're gonna do today is go over how to do this installation, and then we will also do a brief overview of some of the features that this modification has. All right, so let's get to it. Okay, so I have the Nintendo 64 taken apart, and I'm gonna just very briefly go over the steps you need to do in order to uh, disassemble it. First thing you gotta do is get a game bit screwdriver, like this one right here, and you have six of these little guys on the outside that hold the top and bottom shells together. Once you take that apart, then you've got the motherboard right here, and you've got these extremely long screws that go where the cartridge slot is. You've got these longer white screws, and these go where the AV multi-out is and the power supply. Um, all around the edge, you have these standard Phillips screws, and then you've got these two screws that are machine screws with lock nuts that are going here and here. And then finally, on the um, memory pack slot, you've got these two long thin screws right here. So that's really all you gotta do. A Phillips screwdriver and a game bit screwdriver is very easy to use in order to disassemble this thing. The only th other thing you've gotta do is when you remove the um, heat sink on the top, you have to push kind of like this um, just so that you don't do any damage to the RAM chips. So I'm just gonna go ahead and do that really quick. There we go. And as long as you do it like that, then everything should be fine. You just have to make sure that these guys, um, you don't push hard on, on these RAM chips, but otherwise um, it's perfectly safe to do that. Okay, so now that it's disassembled, we're gonna go ahead and start um, soldering in the flex cable. Okay, so now we're gonna go ahead and get started with soldering on the RCP flex cable. This is definitely the hardest part of the installation and um, as you can see, I have also pre-tinned the pads on this flex cable as well. I found that it just makes things a little bit easier uh, because there's already a decent amount of solder positioned on each of the pads. So first thing we're gonna do is just clean everything off with some isopropyl alcohol and we're gonna line up this flex cable so that it starts on pin number six. So you can see that there are these little dots that indicate the fifth pin. So we're just going to go count up to pin six. Okay. And then from here, what I'm going to be doing is just starting by tacking it into place with my soldering iron and just um, going pin by pin and making sure that I have a good solid connection and that there aren't any bridges. It's important to use plenty of flux here because the flux helps to prevent bridges or uh, also helps separate a bridge if you happen to make one. Um, so yeah, let's go ahead and get started with soldering this into position. Okay, so now that the RCP Flex is soldered into position, the next thing we need to do is solder in three wires. Um, so these three wires are connected to the PIF chip, which um, is this little chip located down here. And what we need to do is connect the reset line, the um, RC line, and the controller line to uh, the Flex cable from this PIF chip. This allows us to do the button combination and do in-game reset and basically just control the um, the retro gem using button combinations. So um, what we're gonna be doing is soldering to three pins. So we're gonna be soldering to pin number two, pin number 16, and pin number 27 on this chip. Um, so let's go ahead and get started with that.
Okay, so now we are all set with the reset RC and controller lines, and there's actually only one more step left to do, which is to solder in the five volt power supply on the flex cable, which is gonna go right here to capacitor C130. So all we've gotta do is just give this flex cable a little crease so that it runs along where the multi-out is. And then that little spare leg there is for the five volts, and that's just gonna go onto the positive side of capacitor C130. Okay, so we're getting ready for assembly, and so you can see that we have this N64FX daughter board that goes right over here above where the multi-out goes, and there's a little 3D printed mount that's holding this in place, and we're going to be doing a no-cut version, so we're going to be using this 3D printed multi-out over here so that everything sits nicely and we don't have to make any cuts to the shell. Um, so once this is located here, we're just going to add this flex cable right here, and as you can see, I already installed that with the blue stripe facing up towards you. Uh, one cool thing about the retro gem is that you can leave the RF shield on the bottom here. Um, with the older N64 digital and with some of the other HDMI mods, you actually have to remove this. But with this new mod, you can actually leave this in place, and I honestly really do like that quite a bit. Um, now that that's all situated where we want it to be, we're also going to take this little 3D printed... Um, mounting block right here. This holds everything down, forces everything to stay in place, and you just line it up right over here. Okay, so let me go ahead and put the multi-out shroud on. And there we go. That's a very nice, neat, and tidy fit. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and um, just cut this little... Uh, actually, you can't even see it. <laughs> this little peg right over here this is like a mounting peg to help everything get centered, but it gets in the way of the retro gem. So we're actually going to go ahead and remove it really quick. There we go. So it's just flush with the N64 motherboard and it's not going to get in the way. All right. Okay, there we go. So everything is back together. Um, so let me go ahead and screw this into place. And then we're going to, oh, fuck. Okay, so before I put on the upper portion of the RF shield, you'll notice that I took a piece of Kapton tape and I placed it right over here next to the upper heat sink going all the way to the edge. That's just to protect any accidental contact between this flex cable here and the shield because that would obviously short stuff out and not be a good plan. So I have that in place, and now that that's there, I'm just going to go ahead, and yeah, there we go. Everything fits quite nicely. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and screw all of this into position, and then we're going to get finished up with everything else. Okay, so I have put the top shield on, and as you can see, I actually removed this part of the heatsink right here, and the reason why is because the gem is going to sit more or less like this, right in about here on the, um, on the motherboard. So what we're going to need to do is basically install this 3D printed mount right here. Um, so first what I got to do is I got to take these little M2 nuts and these are going to go into these little cleverly um, placed slots right here. So the, um, the gem is going to screw into place right over here. Just gotta wedge these things into position. Okay, I had to use quite a bit of force on that one. It was pretty, pretty tough, and I found I just had to take my flush cutter and just kind of, ah, there we go, force it in. It takes quite a bit to get it in there, but um, yeah, now it's in place. So we're gonna go ahead and line that up and get it into position. Okay, and finally we're just going to line this up here, and I'm just going to use a smaller screwdriver to connect the gem to the mount. There we go. <laughs> that was actually pretty annoying. But obviously, as you can see, it's much easier to just do it 
off of the gem and then just install like that. Okay, and I believe the final step is right here and you just kind of rotate this. And there we go. Okay, so I'm gonna go ahead and reassemble everything and we will give it a quick test. Okay, so I forgot one final step, which is this little Wi-Fi antenna here. Um, so it plugs into a socket, which is right over here. And I kind of did that off camera just because these things are super annoying for me to get on. I struggle with them. Um, so now that it's on, we're just gonna go ahead and attach the antenna. Okay, so just take off the double-sided adhesive. Just loop this around and we're gonna locate it right over here onto the, um, onto the heat shield right here. All right, so now let's go ahead and give this thing a proper test. Okay, so there is yet one more thing that I had forgotten to mention before reassembling everything, uh, which is the clock mod um, that you can do on the Nintendo 64. So basically what the clock mod does is instead of using the internal clock on the 64, you can let the retro gem handle the clock signal for you. And I think the advantage of this primarily is if you want to play out of region games on your console. So in other words, if you want to play PAL games on your NTSC American or Japanese console, then um, the gem can automatically change the clock so that you're running at 50 hertz and then you can uh, accurately play those uh, European games and vice versa, of course. So to do the clock mod, um, what you've got to do is you need to lift a pin on uh, this chip right over here, it's pin one. It's a slightly different uh, pin on the later revision consoles, and you can actually refer to the um, the RetroGem installation documents. It'll tell you exactly which pin. It's pin three on the equivalent chip. It's um, yeah, and they have photos for that and all that. Uh, you also have to set some jumpers. So you have to close this jumper right here for clock, and then here's the gem itself, and you also need to close this jumper A. Um, if you're doing the clock mod. And then finally, there are some jumpers on here that need to be closed for um, using it on a Nintendo 64. So specifically, you've got to close jumpers J and K, which hopefully you can see right over here. All right, so now that that's all done, let's go ahead and install it into the shell. All right, so I've gone ahead and assembled the console, and I just wanted to show you how nice this one looks. And um, you can barely tell that there's anything resembling a mod going on with this thing. You can see a little bit of the flex cable here on the side. And of course on the back, you've got the 3D printed shroud on the multi-out, which looks really nice. Um, that blends in rather well as well, except of course for this mini HDMI port right here. So yeah, we're all assembled. So let's go ahead and plug this thing in and have a look. Okay, so we are ready to test the retro gem on the N64. Before I do that though, I just wanna apologize for this not ideal setup. I actually just moved recently and so I'm just using one of my main monitors here for testing, but in the coming weeks, I'll have a dedicated monitor set up just for doing this kind of stuff. All right, so let's power this thing on and see what it does. All right, there we go. That is looking really nice. Um, let me go ahead and just start up a game. Perfect. All right, so we've got F0X here and it is looking sharp as hell, looking really perfect. So what we're gonna do now is just go ahead and access the menu. So to do that, we're gonna hit the L and R buttons, C, right, and D, right all together. And there we go, there's our main menu. And you can see that this retro gem has the shiny edition, which means that it has all of the fully featured uh, options available. Um, there's a lower cost version, which does not have a lot of the features available. So uh, I don't have that here. Of course, I can't demonstrate that, but let's go ahead and go through some of the presets. And so we can um, easily put on scan lines, like how you see here. And that actually looks really good. There are quite a number of different options for scan lines on the N64. Um, if we go into video, you can adjust settings on the scaler. You can also get the output resolution all the way up to 1440p. Um, this monitor doesn't support that, so I can't really show it, but uh, you can go that high. 
Um, and then of course, if you're actually doing this installation yourself and you really want to go test it and make sure everything is good, you go into the system menu and you go down here to debug and self-test and you should see hearts on all of the various signals. If there's an X, well, you'll probably have some kind of problem with video or audio, um, but it'll tell you exactly which pins are shorted out to each other and then you can go back and reflow your RCP flex cable and get that all situated. Um, but yeah, it looks like we don't have any problems right now. We just have a uh, perfectly installed retro gem. And yeah, I've gotta say this thing is really nice and I'm going to mess around with it quite a bit before I send it back to its owner. All right, so that's it for this week's video. If you guys like this kind of content, then consider subscribing to the channel. I have videos out like this every Friday. And then of course, if you have a console that you need repaired or modified, you can always reach me directly at oneuprestorations.com. All right guys, thank you very much for watching and I will see you next time. Bye.